This is a catalog number 1S1F transformer by Square D. Schneider Electric. It's an epoxy encapsulated transformer in a NEMA 3R indoor or outdoor enclosure that's mounted to a wall or vertical surface using these welded channels. It's a fairly small transformer, so we're able to put it on its top, revealing the bottom that allows entry into the bottom quadrant, which is the wiring compartment, through conduit knockouts on the front, sides, back, and bottom of the enclosure. I've already knocked out two of the knockouts, and the bottom is covered by two plates that can be opened by quarter inch screws like so. And the bottom has two components, a large plate and a small one that contains the knockouts. Inside we see primary wires that are black and secondary wires that are red on this particular type of transformer, including a quarter 20 bolt for grounding which would be connected to the grounding electrode or grounding wire of the system it's connected into. Now in order to enter the transformer with the wires that uh, carry current in and out of it, we use the bottom plate and conduit entry devices like that. I've prepared some pigtails that are for demonstration purposes using, in this case, small wires. And that would usually, the smaller wires would go on the primary. And I have another unit, or device rather, that has rather larger wires that would typically be the secondary wires. Typical installation would have 480 volt primary coming in and 12240 going out, although the wires gauge can vary. But we see the bottom plate with the wires emerging into the bottom ready to be wired up. Now every electrician should have a kit like this with wiring devices. These are commonly available wire nuts that come in a lot of different colors and sizes for different wiring jobs for various types of wire and various wire gauges. We're going to use a red wire or rather red wire nut on one of the black primary wires to connect one of the incoming primary leads like so. The wire nuts contain a small circular spring inside that makes the connection and you basically screw them on and torque them properly in that fashion. We're going to use a larger wire nut like this one to connect this secondary wire to a larger incoming or rather outgoing wire and we screw that on in the same way and we basically put enough torque on it to make sure that the connection is good. And that's showing you how that is going to look. Another option is using a piece of hardware called a split bolt, which is usually used for much larger wires. And a split bolt is basically a brass or copper colored device that looks like that with a hole in it. And you have a nut that screws down and brings down sort of a little anvil to compress the wire. You, very similarly to wire nuts, compress the anvil on a pair of wires like this. And you would tighten them up and make that connection and tighten it with a wrench and pliers or whatever tools you happen to have on hand to make it a nice tight connection. Now then, once you've done that, you would cover the entire wire nut with layers of black electrical tape to make an insulated connection that will separate it from all other conductors inside the wiring compartment. And whether you use wire nuts or a split bolt, you have the same type of hopefully wiring integrity that you need to install the transformer. So I'm not going to actually wire it for any specific system. But once you get done wiring all the wires according to how you want it to be done, you basically twist all the wires and put them back into the enclosure, kind of in a rather random fashion. 
and then you would put the plates back on like so and reinstall the covers with the screws that hold the covers on and once you do that you have a properly installed transformer I'm not going to do the entire process of putting the screws in but basically you have a transformer that looks like that when you tighten everything up and have it installed on the wall you have an installation of a epoxy encapsulated transformer now as I said this is one of the smaller transformers but the wiring process is very much the same for larger and even smaller versions of epoxy encapsulated transformer Thank you.